Well, good morning. Merry Christmas. I hope you have had a wonderful few days celebrating Christmas and the birth of the Savior of the world. I uh, also hope you get to continue just enjoying this holiday season and the upcoming days and uh, reflecting on what it means that a Savior has been born, enjoying uh, time with family, hopefully getting some time away from work and just slowing down a bit and, and hope that in this season you'll uh, just pause and reflect more on God's word and what he's done for us. Uh, it's a wonderful time of the year, uh, but sometimes we get caught up in the busyness of things that we just, uh, we neglect time to reflect what God has done and the true meaning of the season. So I uh, hope you've been doing that. Hope you continue doing that. And uh, I'm excited to be with you this morning. You know, it has been uh, a while since we've done a pre-recorded service, uh, but we're doing that this morning uh, because we did our Christmas Eve service on Friday and we are not meeting as a church this Sunday. We knew it'd probably be a high travel day, people out of town. And so we did our Christmas Eve service. We're not meeting this Sunday. So if you are on your way to church right now, you have my permission to just stop the car, look for the next Dunkin' Donuts and just pull in there and get whatever you like. Uh, enjoy it. And then uh, we'll be back next Sunday, uh, January 2nd. Would love to have you a part of that. And um, just hope that you get to enjoy the next few days of, of holidays. Uh, I did, uh, with it being Sunday, did want to send a video out just to encourage you from God's word and to remind you the true meaning of the season. I realize that today it's the 26th of December. It's past Christmas, but for believers, we should celebrate Christmas every day. Every day should be a time to look back on what Christ has done for us and have the truths of his coming nourish our hearts and souls. And so I wanted to read to you this morning, Luke chapter two. Uh, this is the account of Jesus being born. I wanted to read it so you can hear it once again. And I just wanna encourage you with a couple things from it. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke chapter two. We're gonna read verses one through 11. It says, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region where shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the same that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it has been told them. That's the word of the Lord. So let me just share a couple of encouragements with you. You know, one of the first things to see in this passage is that God uses the unexpected to accomplish his plans. Uh, here we see that God is using a pagan governor to move a couple from Bethlehem, from, from Galilee to Bethlehem. Uh, in the book of Micah, we see that it's written that the Savior will come from the town of Bethlehem. And yet, here is this child to be born and being born to uh, a person of the line of David, but they're not living in David's city. They're not living in the city that they're supposed to be. They're living in Galilee, the outskirts. But God uses this to take this child, uh, to take this couple from Galilee to Bethlehem to be born there. 
We see that God does things like that uh, throughout Scripture. We see that he does it here with the birth of the Savior of the world. And that encourages us that sometimes as we see things that just don't go the way they plan, like the Savior, the, the Messiah being born in a, in, a, in a stable, being placed in a manger. But God does that. His plans aren't our plans. His ways are not our ways. And so as we read this, we see that God does the unexpected. And oftentimes he does that in our lives as well. Things that we didn't expect or things going the way we didn't quite think they should go or would go. And that encourages us that God can bring about his plan in any variety of ways. He is fully in control and he knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. So you can rest in him. You can trust in him. A second thing to see is that salvation has come and salvation is for all people. We see that here that with the child being born that the angels announce, fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy that is for all people, all people, all races, all nations, all demographics. This is the savior of the world. This is the, the only savior we have to call on and it is the savior that all people can call on. And this is the greatest gift that we could ever receive salvation, salvation from our sins, salvation from all the problems in the world. Uh, you know, as much as I want for Christmas a, an extension to one of my power tools, and as much as some of my kids want video games and other things, really the greatest gift that we could ever receive is, is eternal salvation, to, to be uh, forgiven of all of our sins and have life with God. That is the greatest gift, and that's what God gives to us. And that's why at Christmas we celebrate by giving gifts to one another. It, it, it's to be a reflection of what God has done for us. But what he gives is of so much greater value than anything else we could receive from another person. And it's greater than anything we could give to anybody else. The best thing we can give is the good news that a Savior has been born. And the third thing to see here is that the, the, the coming of the Savior, it results in praise. It results in celebration. People are glorifying God. Mary is treasuring these things in her heart. People are, are in, in wonder of what is going on. That wonder, they're not wondering like, hey, what just happened or what's going on? They're not questioning it. It is a, a wonder of amazement, a wonder of astonishment that, that God has done what he said he would do. God has brought salvation, and that is what fills people to celebrate. You know, as we talk about Christmas, a lot of times we hear things about how uh, depression can increase around Christmas time. A lot of times that's where we're missing people. Uh, we're, we're, we feel the brokenness of the world we live in. Sometimes it's just that we go into Christmas with an expectation of how things should be and how wonderful it's going to be to get the family together. And then the family gets together and there's some arguments, there's some disagreement, there's those things going on. And a lot of times at Christmas, we can feel a bit of disappointment. We thought it was going to be so wonderful and it was good, but it didn't quite go the way we thought. Well, the neat thing with what God is doing, it actually says in scripture that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived of what God has prepared for his people. The salvation that's coming in Jesus is going to be better than we imagine. It's going to be better than what we communicate. God has communicated almost like in, in shadows. We see glimpses of it. But when the fullness gets here, we cannot even conceive of what it's going to be like. It's going to be so wonderful. And so as we celebrate Christmas, and maybe we're in that post-Christmas phase right now, it's a time to reflect that the salvation God is, is bringing, it's going to be everlasting. It's going to be more wonderful than we can imagine. It's what filled these people's hearts with joy. It's what caused the angels to sing and shout, and it should cause us, it should stir us inside. When we realize what God has done for us, it, it should fill us with joy. We should treasure it in our heart. We should stand in wonder and amazement that he would love us, that he would send his son into the world to die for us, to live the perfect life that we couldn't live so that we could be forgiven and be welcomed into his kingdom. That's the good news that Christmas is about, and I want to encourage you with that today. And I want to encourage you to, to, to consider what Christ has done for you. You know, in this passage, we see some shepherds came to observe what was going on. Many people didn't change anything about their life. Many people didn't slow down to come and look. I want to encourage you wherever you're at to make a decision of what is your response going to be to Jesus? Are you going to be one that comes and looks, one who comes to hear what he's done, one who comes to, to follow him? 
Or are you going to be one that just continues going about your life without any change? When we see the good news of the gospel, we want to worship and serve Jesus. And I want to encourage you to think about that, reflect on that, and I want to pray for you. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for the good news that a Savior has been born, that a Savior that is for all people. We celebrate that. We thank you for that. And I pray for each person out there. I pray that they would come and see. Maybe they would come and learn more about what Jesus has done and what it means that a Savior has been born. I pray you would strengthen each person in their walk with you, help them to know you more. And I pray that they would just sense your presence being with them this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, we will be back with our live in-person services uh, next Sunday at 1045. We have a variety of things going on throughout the week. If you're interested in finding out more about that, let us know. Uh, and also want to encourage you, if you just want to find out more about Christ and what it means that he's been born and what it means that there's a Savior, uh, we have different groups that would love to connect with you to help you explore that in a non-threatening way. Uh, if you're interested, reach out to us, give us a call, email us, stop by. Uh, we would love to talk to you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hope to see you soon.